Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Amelie. I'm a French photographer living in Paris. And welcome to episode 18 of my photography, Lightroom and Photoshop tips. Last week, I showed you a little trick using Photoshop CS6 where we took this gentleman and created a magic background using the new blur filter in Photoshop CS6. And here is the final result that we got. So if you have not seen it, go and check it out. This week, we are starting a new series on time-lapse photography. What we are going to do today is learn how to do this time-lapse that you see here. It's a five second time-lapse and we are going to do only using Lightroom and Lightroom only. This is something new. I've been doing time-lapse for many years and I've been using QuickTime or Final Cut Pro or Premiere to merge and create my time-lapse but I found a way that I love doing everything in Lightroom and this is what I will show you today. I will also give you some little tips on how to shoot time-lapse and in the next episode we will do some more advanced stuff. So let's get cooking, let's get starting and let me show you how we do this time-lapse. All right guys, so before we get into the retouching and the merging and the making of the time-lapse, let me explain you a couple of things. Uh, the first thing you need to know about making a time lapse is that you need to have a remote. Um, unless your DSLR can make uh, what we call interval shutter release, meaning that it's going to take a photo like every three seconds or five seconds or ten seconds. Uh, sometimes that's building build up within the camera. I have the Canon 5D Mark II and a 7D, and there is not that, that option, so I bought what I call the internal interval shutter release. Um, here I'm on b and you see there is some like for $34, $29, $49, you know, you have to check whether you're a Nikon or Canon. But basically this remote will give you the ability to program your shutter speed so that it takes the, your, your, your camera, I'm sorry, so that you take a photo every three, uh, five second, 10 seconds, whatever you want. So uh, let me give you a first a little tip about what, what is it best, every three seconds, five seconds, or tes, 10 seconds. For my experience, it, it depends on what you want to shoot. Let's say, for example, you want to shoot something like um, sky moving, you know, clouds moving, uh, and the clouds are moving pretty fast. Uh, every three seconds will do. If they are moving pretty slow, every five seconds will do. Let's say you just want to take a sunset, you know, a sunset is only 20, 20, 25 minutes. So every four or five seconds. Basically, 99% of my timelines that I've been doing has been between uh, the interval between three or five seconds. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing, let me go back on Lightroom. This is our time lapse that we're going to be doing today. This time lapse, I did it on the roof of the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. Uh, the Arc de Triomphe is a monument, and on that monument, the tripods are not allowed. So, and you definitely need a tripod to be able to uh, make a time lapse because you need to have uh, your camera who is going to be completely steady. But on the top of the Arc de Triomphe, there were some statues. And I just put the 5D Mark II on the top of these statues. And then I programmed with that remote that I have to take a shot every three seconds. That is why the horizontal line is not straight because. I was, you know, on a statute, so my Canon 5D, to be completely stable, uh, was not, uh, you know, was not straight. But that doesn't matter because look, this is a 5,184 pixel uh, picture, which is big. You know, the most of the resolution we're doing today is HD, which is like 1,980 large pixel, and here we have 5,184. So it's way too big for a time lapse. So this will give us the ability, and you will see that in the next episode, to move around and make a, uh, you know, pan and zoom within the time lapse. But for right now, let's make things simple. So I've done my shot. I took 129 photos. Uh, let's see. The first one was at 18, uh, 18 at 45 seconds. The second one was 49 seconds. So that's four seconds. Then 52. Uh, that's three seconds. Uh, 55 three second so yeah I was on a three second interval I don't know why the first one is four second probably something that went wrong with the metadata however so I took a shot every three second using that timer have it stabilized on the status now I took this in manual mode now that's very important 
uh, always, always shoot your time lapse in manual mode. Why? Because you see, the um, if I press I again, the the speed is at one two hundred and fifty of a second at seven point one. Seven point one is a big enough uh, depth of field, and one two hundred and fifty second was a, a nice speed. You know, I know I had crisp photos, and so what I did was that I um, I took this on a manual mode. So every photo that you see here is at 7.1 of aperture at 1 250 of a second. And the advantage is that, and that's what we're gonna do now, we're gonna correct one photo in Lightroom and we're gonna synchronize the result with the rest. So and that's gonna be very interesting. But before, to be able to do time-lapse in Lightroom, now, uh, for a couple of years I've been doing time lapse and I used to my workflow used to be to correct the photos in Lightroom and then I would export them from Lightroom and from there on I would use a uh, quick time to create the time lapse and then um, uh, you know like uh, Premiere or Final Cut Pro to do some editing. Uh, today I found a way to do everything in Lightroom. But this is this is because of this website. This website called uh, lrtimelapse.com now on this website uh, you have an amazing software which we will, won't go into this episode but a further episode where you can do all kind of stuff with time lapse you can uh, alter the white balance and other parameters uh, make the holy grail of time lapse photography meaning uh, making very very hard time lapse when it starts to you know you're starting during the day and you're finishing during the night anyways I'm not going to go into these details but if you go on the download page of this uh, website, you can download his software for free, which I will show you how to use next week. But you can also download, and that's very important, download Lightroom time-lapse templates. If you click here, you're gonna get a zip file. This is a zip file, the LR time-lapse um, templates.zip, okay? Now, this uh, file, which is unzipped there, has two things, the slideshow templates, and video presets. And the way you install his, um, uh, the video presets, sorry, the way you install this is that you, you take the zip file, you, you right click on it, you, you create copy, you make a copy of it. I'm sorry, this is a French Mac, but I just did, or you, you press Command C on your Mac. So this zip file is in memory. Then you go into Lightroom, you go into File, no, sorry, Lightroom Preference, Okay, show Lightroom preset folder in the uh, second dialog preset. You click on that, that's gonna open the finder again. Okay, and then uh, you just right click here and you click paste, okay? So you paste in there the, um, the file that, that, uh, that I uh, showed you before, this, this file, and then I'm not gonna do it because I don't, and then you just double click on it and it's gonna unzip it and it's gonna put um, in the proper place, all the templates that we need. So all you have to do is click, right click here, call. This is call it, which means paste, you paste it. And then once it's in there, you look at the file, you double click on it, and it's gonna put uh, the templates in the right place. So it's just as easy as copy and paste and double clicking, that's it. Just make sure you go into the show Lightroom folder. Okay, once you have installed the templates, let's first um, select all the photos by c pressing Command A. Take the first photo and then go into the develop module and start developing that first photo how you like. Now this is a JPEG because I used to shoot my timelapse with JPEG but now I shoot RAW because I find that I, of course get a better quality but you will see it's gonna work out with JPEG. And actually this 129 file I will give you uh, which you will be able to buy if you wanna you know, uh, work at home and try for yourself. Uh, from my website. I'll give you all the instructions at the end of the video. So this is my first photo. I'm in the develop module. I'm just going to develop it if it was a regular photo. So um, let me go into the basic tab. So I'm just going to do as usual. I'm going to open up the shadows. I'm going to turn down the highlights. Then I'm going to use, I'm going to press the option key. Uh, and the white is going to go to the right. Okay something like this until I see some dots. Then I go the opposite with the blacks until I see some blacks. Okay, now I've got a pretty good contrast. I want the sky, I'm gonna make this a bit warmer because it was, I'm gonna 
it was like a sunny day so I'm gonna make this a bit warmer just a little bit here and a bit uh, more on the magenta side especially for this part okay maybe even a bit warmer something like this more vibrant yeah because there was a lot of yellows and everything now two things I'm gonna make the horizon line straight so I'm gonna press on the crop tool then I'm gonna use the angle tool and click and drag my horizontal line okay it's gonna make the whole thing straight okay I press enter because now I've got a straight horizontal line thanks to the 5000 pixels large that I had I'm gonna create a little um, neutral density filter I'm gonna put the exposure a bit down and I'm gonna make a filter just to make the sky a bit more blue I'm gonna maybe add some blue in the sky just with the temperature but I'm gonna keep the yellow here in the buildings okay last but not least I'm gonna add some clarity to the overall photo and um, oh one question that I get a lot is when I do some retouching and I go at camera calibration people say yeah but I don't have I don't I only have embedded camera calibration can only be used on raw file this is a JPEG so I don't have any camera calibration for it so but you know I can still retouch in Lightroom so I'm pretty happy with that oh maybe let's do some um, post crop vignetting you know love the post crop vignetting oh here you can see the statue I, I put my camera on this is a part of the statue okay so now I have retouched the first photo uh, everything is selected so I'm gonna click on sync and I'm gonna synchronize and now I've retouched one photo and in a few seconds 129 photos are gonna be synchronized I don't even have to wait for anything I can go straight to the slideshow module and because you have installed uh, what I've showed you before in the user template you're gonna have all kind of options 15 frame per second time lapse 24 frame per second time lapse 25 frames per second 30 frames per second now if you want a cinema type of look go for 24 if you want like a bit of a modern more look go for 30 if you think that your time lapse is going too fast you can choose 15 I usually always go for 24 that's my thing but that's my thing okay so this will only appear if you follow the first step which was to install the free templates next click on export video and there again because you installed the video preset you're gonna have a whole bunch of video preset there you need to make sure uh, that the video preset this is different size I'm gonna go for 720p all you need to make sure is that the 24 FPF that you have there is the same than here like if I would have chosen 25 go for the 25 you know but 720p 1080p uh, that's just the size so I'm gonna go for 720p 24 because I put 24 there and uh, put a fine name I'm gonna put it on the desktop I'm gonna call this uh, for example FL tower time lapse okay and I'm pre and I press export and that's it and you've done a very heavy-duty retouching and everything done in Lightroom this is really good because you don't have to uh, use any other software you can do everything in Lightroom so you see now it's rendering it's gonna take about five minutes to render everything so I'm gonna put this on pause and then we can watch our time-lapse so see you in a second okay guys so the video has been exported and here it is it's gonna it's last five seconds and we can see we've got a nice time-lapse every photo has been retouched and uh, the clouds are going over the Eiffel Tower and let's look at it one more time you know pretty impressive stuff I love time-lapse voila simple workflow on making time-lapse everything in Lightroom now before we finish here I want to show you my courses my training courses if you watch this ever you know this by heart by now uh, if you go on photosearch.com slash apps here you will find my training courses they cost about between six to ten dollars and you can learn anything from shooting panorama to understanding the basics of photography to all Lightroom 4 and Photoshop C6 training uh, I have had some great reviews on it check them out you help to support this podcast also if you're watching this over on YouTube don't forget to subscribe to my channel you can click just on the subscribe and um, last but not least on the website you can if you you have a new option which is called podcast where you can watch back all the prior episodes 
and you can even buy for three euros the raw file I use so you can follow along with me and do it at home what I show you in the podcast. Voila, that's it for this week. Let's go back to the studio. So I hope you like that tutorial. I think it's a great trick to be able to make time lapse just using Lightroom. Uh, this week's inspiration is a website that you saw in the um, tutorial from Gunther Wegner, something like this, a German fellow. His website is lrtimelapse.com. Check it out because his software is very good and it's actually free up to 400 frames. So you can still do a lot of time lapse using his tools. Next week, I will show you how we can use these tools from this website. But today you at least got the, the free presets, which are really amazing. So thank you, Gunther, for all this nice work. Okay, so I'll send you, I'll see you next week, sorry, for some new time lapse and new inspiration. Goodbye. <laughs>